This podcast is brought to you by the Love Serve Remember Foundation and Ramdas.org. Welcome to the Ramdas Be Here Now podcast. And I'm your host, Raghu Marcus. Well, we've been talking a little bit more about what I call a slice of life, just being with Maharaji day to day. Uh, at that point, I was completely relaxed and felt at home in India. Been there, I guess, going on a year at that point. And, um, in fact, the thought of going home was like, oh, ooh, I don't think I can do that. Not that there was one jit of an idea of leaving. That was a whole other drama that took place later. But at this moment, we were just day to day living up at this wonderful hotel in uh, Nainital, which is this British hill town that they kind of uh, built a lot of hotels or had them built uh, to get away from the heat in the summer. It's a fantastic place, lovely place. Um, and so we were all staying there, I guess uh, around 30 people or so, and uh, obviously sharing day-to-day our experience going to see Maharaji. And Ramdas, of course, was with us, and he was, you know, kind of acting as the teacher. He wasn't kind of, he was. Although there were some people who did not consider that part of their journey, and that once we all met Maharaji, we all had direct experiences with him. But Ramdas was older, and we all had all kinds of issues all the time, so he certainly acted in that stead. Um, but then, at one point, he got a little bit had enough of these Westerners, and they're glomming onto him, and and a lot of manipulative uh, egos were were happening then. So uh, he. One day, once upon a time, Ramdas walked, took about, I don't know, takes about from Nainital, where the ashram is about half a day. And he walked there while uh, the rest of us took wonderful taxis and buses. And, and as a matter of fact, Ramdas had for a while a Volkswagen bus that we used to use until Maharaji told him, no, you don't. No, Guru doesn't drive. Guru is humble and takes walks or takes the bus. So Krishnadas ended up driving the um, the Volkswagen bus and Ramdas driving him out of his mind. Anyhow, so he walked to Kenchi and he gets there and we're being served food across the courtyard from Maharaji who's sitting on the bench tuck it. And he gets there and he's not a happy camper. And one of the satsang goes over and gives him a plate of food, which he promptly throws back in his face, which in India, food being totally like sacred, you can't even not finish your meal or else it's like you might as well go slap some the host. Uh, so this was a terrible, <laughs> terrible event. And, uh, and he was really upset. Maharaji called us over and Ramdas was just sitting there glumly with this plate of food all over the place. And said, what happened? And we told him, well, Ramdas is, is not happy with us. He, he thinks we're being very adharmic or, you know, in a simpler way, that means self-involved, where our self-interest was so high, he just couldn't handle it anymore, which, of course, to some degree it was. And, uh, and Maharaji just looked at us and said, hey, listen, he didn't say it like that, but he said, no one would have gotten here to me except for Ramdas. You don't know who he is. And he went on like that. Then he called Ramdas up. And he said, You're angry? And Ramdas said, Yes, I why? I can't take these the the self interest of the Westerners. He said, A Dharma of the Westerners. And Maharaji said, You have to give up this anger. But I'm gonna help you. And he got a a glass of warm milk, and he said, I'll give you the milk, but you have to drink it, which is a key teaching, which is having the intention to want to let go, right? So, and of course, Maharaji, it's it's his job to, to provide it. But there is some relationship there of from a, a guru and a uh, devotee. 
so that happened and um boy this was i'd say well it's a story that's been told by ramdas and others many many times because the 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 real teaching in there of of letting go of volition to let go is so powerful you know and uh and again this is another slice of life slice of a day of, of hanging out with him um so and here is what ramdas was talking about in sanskrit what happens when you pursue yoga which means union yoga or union you go behind the form you go into the place where it is all one all one that place in sanskrit is called sat chit ananda sat chit ananda Sat chit ananda is the kingdom of heaven Ram Tirth the poet who was a realized being describes Sat chit ananda from inside he lives on the other side of the doorway See on the other side of the doorway you see there's no doorway there's only a doorway from this side it's another paradox He says I am without form without limit I am beyond space <coughs> beyond time I am in everything everything is in me I am the bliss of the universe everywhere am I I am sat absolute existence chit absolute knowledge ananda absolute bliss tatvam asi I am that tatvam asi I am that sat chit ananda think of the fine energy now what is the fine energy the quality of the fine energy it permeates everything remember i said about padma sambhava he is pure light he is pure consciousness he is pure love he is pure wisdom he is pure energy do you understand that identity i am talking about a specific identity <laughs> A very cold systematic identity when you go up the pyramid and this is what plato suspected when he got into his realm of pure ideas when you go up the pyramid follow beauty all the way back follow love all the way back behind into personal love follow follow energy back as the physicists are doing you end up at the top of the place where it all turns out to be the same do you understand that that fine energy we've just been talking about is the same exact thing as what we call consciousness the universe is conscious it is consciousness it is not self conscious it does not know it knows it just is it is <laughs> it is consciousness sat chit ananda my guru who is a guy that lives on the other side of the doorway he just is he doesn't sit around knowing he knows the candle flame doesn't sit around saying i am being a candle flame it's just being a candle flame 
If there is a, a requirement, a motive, a desire, desire brings the guru from being in the place where he is just like the candle flame, just part of consciousness, the vast, pure energy that is consciousness, it brings him back down into form. Brings him down into form. Brings him down into knowing he knows. I mean, I meet the guru, and I'm there by chance, and I go up, and in a few minutes he tells me all about things that have happened to me in my past. And he tells me things that he can't know. By any means I know he knows. By any of the usual techniques of knowing one knows. So when he does that to me, he completely takes me the next step. He creates the faith. He blows my mind. Lest ye see miracles ye will not believe, Christ said with great compassion. I was one of those people. It's the kind of, kind of Western cynicism that is the basis of science also. I'll entertain the hypothesis. That's cynicism. The null hypothesis. The null hypothesis. There is no relationship until I can demonstrate with a certain degree of probability that there is a relationship. And he did that thing and he cut through what had to be cut through. Now, did he sit there and say, like, well, here's this cat, I think I will remember, I will tell him that. No, that's thinking, that's knowing you know. He isn't there at all. He was just being. He was being a leaf on a tree, like. And I came along, and there was in me a desire to get ahead, to cut through my cynicism. And it was my desire which brought that thing out of him. It was my desire which brought that thing out of him. Now, this is very far out, and if you can grasp it, it's really very, very uh, important. Very important. Because to be that pure energy is just a state of total being. And when I say you aren't who you think you are, it's because you define yourself in terms of doing versus being. Knowing you know your thoughts. Your body and what it does. You say, I'm a lawyer, or I'm an architect, or I'm a hippie, or whatever you are. You define yourself in terms of social roles, in terms of actions. How do I know myself? As if I'm a behavior studying myself from outside. The fact of the matter is, when you go in and in and in and in and in and behind that role and that role and that role and that one too, you get to a place where you just are. Just pure isness. Pure isness, pure awareness, pure consciousness, pure energy. If you really reside in that, then you live in Sat Chit Ananda. That means you no longer live in this time space locus called the body. That's the beginning of what is at the lower levels is called astral travel. See, astral travel still means going from point A to point B. So it must mean there's some finite being that goes from A to B. The guru is beyond astral travel. He is point A and point B. That's what I said. If we knew who we really are, there'd only be one of us here. There is only one consciousness in the whole universe. And when you cut through the drama, you reside in that place, in this place, in here. In here. In here. Now, do you understand what chit means? Absolute knowledge? Absolute knowledge? I mean, can you imagine what you've been doing? You've been, when I said to you, there's nothing I can say you don't already know, you didn't believe me. You didn't really believe me. You thought I was putting you on. 
I mean, you are actually probably, and I do the same thing, you go into bookstores and you buy a book like there's something in the book you aren't. You realize you're already the book if you but knew. I mean, my teacher, he's like, he's a very pure being. He's not as high as the guru, but he's a very, he's got a number of siddhis or powers. He'll take a book like this, he'll pick it up and... And, yeah, there are some things in it that'll be helpful to you. You've got to be around these people for quite a while before you understand they're not putting you on. In their world, there are no hypes. There's nothing but total truth, total purity, total purity. They live in the spirit. We live in this in this place. So what we are in is a journey called the evolution of consciousness. It is God coming to know himself, which finally becomes himself. Because you understand, let me show you the levels, the way it works. You're at the physical plane where you're receiving vibrations at a certain rate, so all you see when you look around you in this room are other gross physical beings. You're not seeing any of the astral beings in this room at this moment, most of you. Some of you are. Some of you see the astral bodies in each other by seeing auras. Others of you don't see those auras. Some of you, when you see the aura, you think it's a trick that the light's playing on you. Because you don't trust the processes that happen in you. Many of you are higher than you let yourself be most of the time. That's the fact of the matter. Most people are constantly having experiences where they break through the veil and they reject it almost all the time because it doesn't fit in with the existing model. It's always happening. The physical plane is the plane at which you're at this vibrational rate and you've got a body and you're... What keeps you there, now you've got to understand what I'm going to say about desire, is what keeps you there is your own desire. The only reason, like Ramakrishna Paramahansa, the beautiful, beautiful saint in India, Ramakrishna, Ramakrishna was in such a high state, he had a terrible time staying in his body. It was a terrible problem. He kept drifting off. And he had to keep creating desires in order to stay in his body, in order to, be, to hang out for his, his, because his trip was to help people do his, their thing, I guess. I mean, I don't... I'm not... I'm not in cosmic government, so I don't... <laughs> I don't recall giving him his assignment if I did. <laughs> so he'd say, I'm thirsty, get me a glass of water. And they get him a glass of water, he says, oh, I couldn't touch a drop. He said, I thought you wanted a glass of water. I just wanted to want something to bring me back here. I had to be... For those of you that don't understand, over there there is a raised platform and around it there is a um, a, a pool that is filled with charcoal, but there's no water in it at the moment. And all that you hear, which sounds like horses in stables, <laughs> is the charcoal. And somebody may have just fallen off the. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
It is desire, it is our desire that keeps us in this physical plane. I'll explain more about that in a second. Now there's a physical plane, and when you have finished with the desires that keep you with the physical plane, when you have finished with that level of desire, then you move into the next plane, which is called the astral plane. And the astral plane is a plane where beings dwell just like you and me, except their desires are more subtle and the desires do not require that they have physical manifestations. And all the beings you've ever read about in all the nursery books and all of the fairy tales and the Bible and all these things about demons and devils and goblins and fairies and nymphs and Padmasambhava and all these, they're all hanging out at the astral plane. And they're all real. Because that plane is just as real as this is. It's just another cut, another vibrational cut. It's just another vibrational cut. And if you can go from what happens to most people, like we've all witnessed recently the drama of uh, uh, James Pike and his son Jim. And Jim shot himself and then, or died somehow, I guess he shot himself, and then he was in contact with his father after, across the plains through a medium. A medium is a being who can tune in on the astral plane. Now what happens is this astral plane, this next level out, has a number of layers to it. You've got to understand that all the time we in the West were busy charting the moon and the trip to the moon and how to, and how to work in uh, the frontiers of the West and how to dig into the ocean. There have been a lot of guys who have been busy charting the inner world and these other domains. And there are beautiful maps and charts if you can read them if you have enough faith to be able to open yourself to be able to see what they're about. So there are many, many, many levels. Some, oh, you can probably, in, the, in most of the Sanskrit literature, there's six or seven levels. Above this one. The first one out is what is in the Christian Bible called heaven and hell. And it's that kind of a level. It's got all those things in it. See, the Lord, the Christian Lord, is a manifestation. He's got his, he's got his, his uh, throne, and he's got his angels, and all that seen around him. That's all astral. That's all astral. And as Bhagavad Gita says, those that pray, pray to the gods, go to the gods. If you desire to go to heaven, that's where you go to heaven, which is the first plane of the astral plane. It's a very groovy place to go. There's six more above it, so don't, you know, don't get too hung up there, but it's a nice place. Certainly good. Good people go there. <laughs> Persian um, Rumi says, I died as mineral and became a plant. I died as plant and rose to animal. I died as animal and I was man. Why should I fear? When was I ever less by dying? Yet once more I shall die as man to soar with angels blessed. But even from angelhood I must pass on. All except God doth perish. When I have sacrificed my angel soul, I shall become what no mind e'er conceived. Oh, let me not exist, for non-existence proclaims in organ tones, to him we shall return. God and that fine energy and Padma Sambhava and your Atma, it's all the same stuff. All the same thing. It's behind it all. It's behind the physical plane, behind the astral plane. And we got one more plane to go. We got the causal plane. The causal plane is what Plato was talking about. It's a plane of pure ideas. 
And the planes are like this. They're, they're, each plane subsumes the next planes. When you finish with the grossest desires that keep you here on the physical plane, then you're left with a lot of subtle desires. Like, you want to be God of the wind? Baby, you're going to be God of the wind. I mean, you don't realize how it's all going to come out. Wait till you see. It's really going to blow your mind. <laughs> You're going to be everything you ever wanted to be. That's the funny part about the astral trip. You do it all yet. Everybody does it all. It's in store for everyone. Don't worry about it. You don't have to be chosen. <laughs> you can be anything you want. At the astral plane, you can create your universes. You're given that privilege. You're also given the wisdom to know how to not screw it up. Because your ego's gotten very subtle, very subtle. There's still desire, as long as there's desire, there's still ego. As long as there's desire, there's still an astral plane. Your desire creates your universe. That's the rule of thumb. Desire creates the universe, be it physical, astral, or causal. So you get finished with the gross things that keep you on the astral plane. I mean, you really want to have that full color experience you want to travel like light. You want to bathe in ambrosial bliss. You want to hang on to bliss because it feels so good. Sure, man, you're going to have plenty of chance. Then you've got to give that one up, too. You've got to give that one up, too. I have a guru brother who is in the Himalayas. He is in a cave in the Himalayas. He is a 23-year-old Westerner from Laguna Beach. Okay. Except he happens to be a very high being. I'll tell you why, what, what, who's what in a second. He is spending most of his time in this cave on the astral plane. He's doing his astral work at the moment. Because the rules of this game are, when you start the trip, as you get pure, as your mind gets karma through meditation, as you learn to work with the energies, you can easily get out of the time-space locus and the gross physical plane, then you go into the next plane. But you've got a lot of work to do there, because it's very seductive, and you've got to go a lot of trips there, just like you're going trips here. And if you do enough, you can do the whole thing through the physical, causal, astral and causal, all in one lifetime. Once you're on the path, if you just don't get caught in the cul-de-sacs. And this is what he has to say about this. He's, he's in this cave in the Himalayas. This is his letter to me. Crystal clear illumination. Here we are sitting in the flowers, rock, raindrop, birds, fire, spring of light. Last night we tuned the sitar to the morning star, and the goddess herself came in dazzling brilliance as mind dances Sahajananda, great Ananda, great bliss vastness, effortlessness, emptiness, wrapped up in two hands hold hot wooden bowl of chai, tea, with wisps of mist and steaming jade. Baba Ram Das Ji, that's me, is nowhere to be found but a hollow bamboo is growing outside the window. Who could have imagined that right from the first, mind is absolutely pure? Who could have believed that right from the first, not a thing is? Here in the North Country, winds blow heavy from Himalayas as I collect sticks and wood for Duni, for the fire. As abiding is really no abiding, I'm abiding in this kuti, this cave. A lot of ancient Chinese days and nights with gong-blowing mind and flying sky dragons and Vajra Yogini dances, lightning bolt goddesses dancing in the womb of time. 
complete abandonment. The nectar is amakala, dripping everywhere at every moment from union, wisdom, love, dance of sun and moon, which conceives bodhicitta, conceives pure intellect. In other words, intellect's one level down. Naked, freezing to death in the middle of a roaring fire, lay it down, drop it, let go, sing it out, throw it out. Going all the way is holy, but alas, some linger on the path to see and smell the pretty golden sunflower or hold hands with eternity, or practice ecstasy bliss, or circulate the light, or reach neither perception nor non-perception, but lingering anywhere you might, get stuck for kalpas for ages, ages. But the Sahaja Stiti Samadhi, the final Samadhi, is really no Samadhi. Therefore, it's really the end. Since there is no end, you can't put the end anywhere. Blue sky and Buddha sits throwing blanket over shoulder, sending apples in all directions at once. Ram Das Baba Kaisahai Tikai Bumt Acha Adni Jao 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 and lingering is gone, 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 well gone, long gone, gone beyond the beyond. Maharaji, our guru, is nothing special, and yet his body fills the universe. <coughs> You can't go forwards or backwards or stand still. Move, move, move. You can feel that letter. He's moving in and out of the level. Just as he's writing it. Just as he's writing it. He's describing these different levels. Now, when you go from physical to astral to causal, you are still with the subtlest desires, the desires for pure idea. Pure idea. Thought creates matter. Mind creates matter. The causal plane is the world of ideas that creates the universe. Right at the top of the causal plane is where we call what we call Godhead. The Godhead. It's the first place into the universe of form. It's the first world of form. It's the place where God created the universe. His mind, his thought manifested into the universe. His thought manifested into all the lower levels of the causal plane, all of the astral plane, and all of the physical plane. His thought manifested into all of that. And when you go back and back and back and back, you go to that place where you become one with the Godhead. You are God at that point. You are the idea that lies behind the universe. You literally are it. So you're not making believe you're it, you are it. And the funny thing is, you're still not finished. And as far as a Buddhist is concerned, you haven't even begun the trip. You're still hung up in form. Because he says, baby, it's all illusion, no matter how groovy it gets. I mean, this physical plane is obviously illusion, all a dream. Then you go to bed at night, and you go to sleep, and then you dream. Now, you notice about your dreams, they're very real, and yet they don't have any physical form. That's the astral plane. You're dreaming in the astral plane. And then when you get to the point of just pure ideas, sometimes when you're a, a very high physicist, or a very poets you've seen, they touch just pure idea. 
Sometimes art or a, a vase or something gets so essency, you feel you are touching God by being in connection with that piece of art. Because it's pure idea, it's the idea of vaseness, if you will. That place. It's, 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 it's causal. It's causal plane. A mind at the causal plane created the vase. created the day. But then you go finally through the final door and you go from the form into the formless, into the void, into the beyond the beyond. The Tibetan, uh, Tibetan mantra is gate gate para gate para samgate bodhi swaha. O oh, wisdom which has gone beyond, beyond the beyond, to thee homage. When you have cra- crossed the ocean of sanskara, the ocean of illusion, the ocean of desire, the ocean of attachment, you can call it whatever you will, it's all the same ocean. When you have crossed through all the form, you become you enter into the state of formlessness. It is eternally quiet. It's eternally quiet. It never was. Push far enough toward the void Hold fast enough to quietness, and of the ten thousand things, none but can be worked on by you. I have beheld them whither they go back. See all things, howsoever they flourish, return to the roots from which they grew. This return to the root is called quietness. Quietness is called submission to fate. What has submitted to fate becomes part of the always so. To know the always so is to be illumined. Not to know it means to go blindly to disaster, says Lao Tzu in the Book of Tao. This podcast has been brought to you by the Love Serve Remember Foundation and Ramdas.org. We appreciate all the support for the Foundation and for Ramdas's work, and we hope that you will continue that support. You can go to Ramdas.org and click on the Donate Now button and follow the prompts. Thank you.